Hello. It's me again. What I have to say today isn't going to be easy, and there's no way to word this to make it any less painful to talk about, or make it any more pleasant to hear. It took me a long time, for emotional reasons and for sensitivity's sake, and honestly because of how much has been going on, to be able to make this video. I know the last time you heard my voice, I was talking to you about some of the medical issues that Bunny had suffered. I addressed the severity of those issues, and how incredibly frail her health was. I wish I had good news, but I don't. November 11th, the founder of our channel, Evelyn, who is known as Bunny to many of her friends, was taken off life support and passed away. In the interest of respecting her wishes in life, I want to tell you what happened. Evelyn was born a type 1 diabetic, and her health was increasingly more frail throughout her life. The facts as I was told and understand them are that Bunny was both transgendered and bisexual, and this led to a serious falling out with some parts of her family, which resulted in periods of homelessness. Bunny was a strong believer in building a community, though, and was accompanied by two friends at the time of our meeting having taken those friends in, in the interest of giving them a better life. Unfortunately for Bunny, her hip was broken by rescuing one of those friends from a fall, and her ability to work a regular job as a chef was severely diminished. Even with surgery, her hip never properly healed, and the way it did heal caused her serious pain, making standing or walking difficult. She and her two friends were about to become homeless again within a month of the meeting. I lived alone at that time and was in a period of grieving, but when I was told about the seriousness of her condition and their situation, I understood. Bunny made it very clear that if she were left on the street at that time, she would have died. I could not have lived with myself if that were to happen. I offered for them to come with me and live in my place until they were on their feet. It was proposed at that time. Eventually, we'd managed to pool together enough money to get a larger place. This period was complicated for me. It was four people living on top of each other in an efficiency apartment. There wasn't even a door separating me from my new roommates. And Bunny slept in my bed because of her hip. My tiny living room was entirely commandeered by the other two people. I had mixed feelings about the sudden lack of privacy in space. I had negative feelings about food in the fridge disappearing in an opportune times. I had even more negative feelings about many other such incidents, such as Bunny's severe digestive issues causing sudden unexpected bouts of vomiting, and me being the only person with the physicality and the stomach to scrub messes out of my carpet. Suffice it to say, I never did get my deposit back. We fought. We had problems. But the four of us became family, and I loved them. Unfortunately, before I came into their life, Bunny had developed a callus on the bottom of her right foot. Diabetics are notorious for issues with their feet, and as I have mentioned before, she was an amputee. So most of you know that this part of the story doesn't end well. The callus healed, but we did not see the inside of her foot, and unfortunately, there was an infection brewing under the surface that tunneled into her bone. I took her to the hospital, had the infected flesh and bone taken care of. She was put on antibiotics. She lost some toes, but she had kept her foot at that time. The doctors sent her home with wound care instructions. But Bunny had no ability to do her own wound care, so it became part of my daily routine to inspect her foot, to clean it according to doctor's orders, to dress it and wrap it. This went on for a very long time. Meanwhile, I was working long hours at my job. I was constantly exhausted. I had little time for fun or friends other than the ones I was living with. I continued to not have my own elbow room or space to relax. Being in the medical field, I had people I was taking care of at work and people I was taking care of at home, and it was rough. But I did it out of love and friendship. Eventually, though, my funds started to be depleted by caring for four people, and one having very serious medical needs. Bunny's family offered to take her in again to try and 
repair things between them. As a result, one of her friends was to travel back home with her, and the other was intended to go stay with another friend, leaving me alone again. I gave them the use of my car, and I paid for the bus tickets to help them all move forward. But unfortunately, the wound that I had almost had completely closed and in good condition when I sent her away was, by the account Bunny gave to me, entirely neglected when she was back with her family. As a result, an almost healed foot was ravaged by infection until the bone had done a 180 rotation, and, well, to spare you further detail, she received her amputation to save her from the infection reaching her heart. Bonnie's health continued to weaken, and the falling out with her family was not repaired. Having had a chance to save up my money again, I paid for the bus tickets for her and her companion to return to me. Eventually, the burst appendix episode from my last update occurred. Her close call with death there made things very difficult. Massive infections and frail diabetics do not go together. The giant wound that she had from surgery took months to heal, and it was very painful, but I managed to continue wound care on it until it closed, and I took care of her as best I could. I had to continuously do wound care on her amputated leg as well, because it would occasionally get nicks or the seams would split. It was difficult. I got us a four-room home together, and I lived there with her, picking up the friend who had been sent away, and also recruiting Sobi and Woodfei to come live with us in our home and be a small community around here, supporting each other. There's a lot I could say about what happened from there, but from the perspective of Bunny's health, it was a long and painful tug of war. She had many infections, in spite of my constant efforts to keep her strong and provide for her. For months, I was the only working adult in our household, and that put massive strain on me. At times, I woke up to medical emergencies, to things like seizures, or to Bunny lapsing into a hypoglycemic stupor. Even though I provided all the food and supplies and medications and doctor's visits as I could with her insurance and my finances, it was mentally, physically, and emotionally exhausting. More than once, I found myself at her bedside in the hospital again, sometimes holding one of her friends and comforting them and reassuring them that she'd bounce back, sometimes just silently waiting for her to regain consciousness. Sometimes holding Bunny and reassuring her that I wouldn't leave her, that I would see her through this no matter what I had to do. Telling her that I loved her and that she would beat this thing just like all the other times. It took a lot of work. I had to set up appointments with ten different specialists, in addition to all of the appointments with her regular doctor to fix her eyes, which were slowly losing function. They needed laser surgery and shots and new glasses with a different specialist. I had to take her to someone to fix her hands, which were growing numb, and her nerve function in general, which was degrading rather quickly. A kidney doctor was also required because her kidneys continuously towed the line between function and failure, and a gastroenterologist, a wound care doctor, follow-ups with a surgeon, two different specialists to get her fitted with a prosthetic to help her walk again, that last one took so much work and frustration and time and effort, but I was desperate to help her and we were so close. I was so close to seeing her walk again, to giving her back her freedom. But eventually, I was working 14-hour graveyard shifts every night that I worked. I was worn out. I had a lot of difficulties in my personal relationships, and I desperately needed a little time away. For the first time in about three years, I took five days for myself to fly out on the first day to Oregon to visit a friend and to return on the fifth, to resume working a 14-hour work shift for every night for the next two weeks. I was barely off the second plane, and I had only just set foot into Oregon, when I received a phone call from work asking me to come in, even though I'd scheduled this vacation for, well, 
well in advance. Well over a month. I started receiving phone calls from companies and doctor's offices and my roommates. I got 16 calls within the first three days. This is just to give you some perspective on how much it was taking just to organize her regular care. But the 14th phone call on the third day, that was from Bunny herself. She sounded very tired but was adamant about getting my help with a financial problem. I was a bit terse with her over the phone. I didn't snap or anything, but I know I sounded annoyed. I was so desperate to clear my head and de-stress so I could come back in better spirits and attend to her awaiting appointments to finally get her that new prosthetic foot. I should have been listening more closely, I only spoke to her briefly and my mind was occupied, but I should have asked if she was okay. I should have insisted my other friends check her blood sugar. I... <sighs> the next phone call was to tell me that Bunny was in the hospital. The tiredness that I thought I heard was an episode of hyperglycemia. Bunny had gotten confused. Her lethargy made her think that her sugar was low so she got a large sugary drink without checking her blood sugar or asking anyone to help her check it. The result was an extreme sugar high that boosted her numbers over a thousand, and she began to have full body seizures with an episode of DKA. Diabetic ketoacidosis, for those of you who don't, who don't know, it's a serious complication of diabetes and can be triggered by infection. Bunny was on and off of antibiotics for most of the time I cared for her. She'd already had an episode of DK before, so just hearing her symptoms described to me, I immediately knew what it was. I didn't have to wait for the diagnosis. However, for those of you who don't know, one of the possible outcomes of diabetic ketoacidosis is coma. Bunny's lungs and kidneys shut down. She was put on a ventilator. For a moment, she woke up and tried to rip out the tube that was helping her to breathe. The doctors attempted to stop her by giving her a sedative to keep her from panicking. It put her to sleep, but because her kidneys had already shut down, the medication could not be removed from her system. She stayed in a deep, comatose state. Her condition continued to very rapidly weaken and deteriorate, and her body just couldn't filter out the medicine or the toxins in her bloodstream, even though she fought it. Through a combination of breakdown and lack of oxygen reaching her brain, tissue death occurred. When Bunny asked me a while back to become her power of attorney, it had only been like a month prior, I, I told myself I'd never actually have to address her final wishes. Bunny was too stubborn to die, too headstrong, too young, even with all of her issues. She'd survived so many times that even as my gut instinct screamed at me from a plane back home that this was different, I refused to listen. For a long time now, I've come home or come downstairs, and I've expected to see her sitting at the table in her wheelchair, chatting about Yu-Gi-Oh cards or about food. Or working on our game designs, chatting with our Discord group. My heart sinks every time I see that she's still not there. She's still gone. It felt like a dream. A terrible dream. When Sasha Pony and I walked into our hospital room to say our goodbyes, it tore up my heart in ways that I just can't talk about. I miss her terribly. All of us in the house, we talk about her like she's still alive. Bunny is this. Bunny is stubborn. Bunny is funny. Bunny is determined. Not was. Not was because it doesn't feel real that she's gone. It's been left to me to handle much of her final affairs. Before I talk about the fate of this channel, which will likely be in the next video, I want to give Evelyn's friend and sometime mutual caretaker, Sobi, an opportunity to speak her piece. 
So I'm going to pass the mic over to her. Hello, my name is Sobe, otherwise known as Still Strange Fox. I met Evelyn several years ago on Second Life. We were both just hanging out somewhere and we both decided to start chatting. We quickly became fast friends. And at the time, I was working for Lyft. And one of the first opportunities I had to write a decent paycheck to actually do stuff that I wanted to do. I went to go out and see them when they were staying at a friend's place up in Illinois. I had moved down to Texas back in 2016. And around that time, I'd only been in the state for a couple of months. My health had started deteriorating a bit and I was staying with a friend of mine. When we had gotten the call that things were going from bad to worse up at her friend's place up in Illinois, I knew I just couldn't sit idly by and I convinced my roommate at the time to go on a road trip and help rescue them. We drove the 16 hours we needed to to drive all the way to tech, uh, from Texas, get the, what they uh, need, get them and all the stuff they wanted to bring with them, and get it all down to uh, Texas, and we were all living together in a tiny one-bedroom apartment. This was about a couple years before they had met Hikaru. Both me and Evelyn considered each other family. She was like a sister to me, and she felt the same way about me. When they told me they were wanting to do YouTube stuff together, we did a few videos together, like Subnautica or a few videos here and there, and I was helping them gain notoriety for their channel, as well as my own, and she agreed to let me upload some of my videos to her channel, so that way it can at least have a lot more activity because at the time when I was uploading them I was a lot more active and her health was starting to deteriorate a lot more rapidly. When Eve went to the hospital it was like a punch in the gut. I was there when they started having the DKA episode and it was terrifying but in the back of my mind, I just kept telling myself that she's just going to bounce back. It's going to be about a week in the hospital, and she's going to bitch and complain about being stuck in there like she usually did. And she was going to be back out and just perfectly fine. But when we got the news that they wouldn't wake up, I just couldn't fully process it. I kept feeling like someone was trying to punk me or something. That they were just trying to get a joke out of me that I was going to get a call from Evelyn like a, uh, like an hour later just saying, ha, I got gotcha. you. I made you, I uh, made you think, didn't I? Eve was probably one of the most creative people I've ever known. She was kind, smart, resilient, and probably one of the most stubborn people I've ever met whenever she put her mind to something. She also had probably one of the most darkest sense of humor as I've ever known. And always seemed to turn one of the situations she was into into a twisted sense of humor or some kind of joke to where she made several jokes about after she had lost her foot that she would constantly keep putting her foot down to get her point across. Part of me keeps thinking that this is a bad dream, that I'm going to wake up and they're going to be perfectly fine. Working on their games or the mods they've been working on, but I, I, I know better and that's the thing that hurts the most. Good pie, Eve. I love you, sis. The world is more boring without you. <laughs>